Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot, how should I be cleaning my lab equipment, even for the small producers or the DIYers at home? So let me show you the basic steps of what you should be doing to make sure that your lab equipment is always clean and ready to use. Now, if you're also going to be manufacturing, there is some additional steps you need to take care of, and I'll go through those in this video as well. One of the first things that you need to remember is that when you are making cosmetic products, you don't need a sterile environment, but it should be very clean. Your water sources must be very clean and your air must also be very clean. In this video, I'm going to talk about process water. And process water is the demineralized, sanitized water that you should be using when you're making your product samples or manufacturing a cosmetic batch. I'll also be talking about mains water, and mains water is the water that comes direct from the tap. Just remember the important difference between these two water sources, as you'll see me explain throughout the cleaning process. First of all, if you have really oily equipment, make sure you wipe these over with paper towel or other tissue type source to remove the excess oil. It's going to make cleaning at the next step a lot easier if you've got the excess oil removed from your equipment. Next, we come to the washing step. Now in this step, we wash everything really thoroughly, all surfaces in hot soapy water. Now this can just be a regular detergent. The most important thing here is that you are cleaning all surfaces really thoroughly. Next, we rinse all items with process water. This is really important. So this is your clean water that you would use in manufacture. It should be demineralized, deionized, and should be free of any microorganisms. We use a really powerful filtration system here, but you may have other systems that you can use or other water systems to ensure you're using good process water. Then we allow the equipment to air dry in a clean environment. It must be clean and dust free for this air drying step. Now, if you're manufacturing product, you would at this stage include a hyperchlorite step where you would immerse all equipment in a 200 parts per million hyperchlorite solution and then rinse again thoroughly with process water and allow to air dry. Once equipment is dry, you store it in a very clean environment. Here we have dust-free and clean air environment in our lab, so we can leave our equipment uncovered. If you're not gonna be using equipment for some time or aren't sure about the cleanliness of the air in your lab environment, then store equipment in airtight tubs. Just before use, spray your equipment with a 70% isopropyl alcohol or ethanol solution and wipe with a clean cloth. Clean, stored and prepared in this way and your equipment is ready to use and you'll make sure your products remain contamination free. So let me just run through those steps again. Step one, remove any excess oil or debris using paper towel or similar before you get to the washing step. Step two, wash the equipment thoroughly with hot soapy water. Detergent is fine at this stage and use mains water. Step three, rinse with process water. Now, if you're just working with your lab equipment at this stage, you would allow it to air dry in a clean environment. If you're manufacturing, you would then follow with a hyperchlorite immersion and then rinse with process water again before allowing it to air dry in a dust-free clean environment. Step four, once air dry, move that equipment into an almost sterile environment, like a clean air lab environment, as you saw me do. If you're not going to be using the equipment for some time, or if it's a high traffic area, or you're not sure about the cleanliness of the environment, store your equipment in sealable tubs. Step five, spray your equipment with 70% isopropyl alcohol or ethanol solution just before use and wipe with a clean cloth. The excess alcohol will evaporate quickly, leaving your equipment clean and ready to use. 
So there you go, that's how to clean your lab equipment effectively to make sure it's always ready to use and won't contaminate your products. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.